Hello and a warm welcome to the Racing Postcast, brought to you by Racing Post Members Club. It's the final day of the UK British flat season. It's Champions Day at Ascot this Saturday, live on ITV. Six excellent races to get stuck into on what could be Frankie's final day on a UK race course. We're still yet to find out whether that's going to be the truth. But I am joined by an excellent panel of guests this week to preview the action. Graham Robway and Tom Park. Gira, I'll start with you. It's the end of the British flat season. We're hoping to see all these top quality horses. We've got top quality fields, but not top quality weather this weekend. No, it's meant to absolutely hammer it down, isn't it, uh, Sam? So it should be uh, interesting, to say the least. Are they going to move the meeting on the round course to the inside track or the outside track? When they moved it to the inside track four years ago, the ground was good to soft on the inside and soft on on the main course. Uh, So it certainly won't be heavy if they do move it. But I'm hoping they don't, to be honest, Sam, because most of my bets are based on the premise that we're going to get really testing ground. So I think in the middle of October at Ascot, it's fair to expect that, is it not? Absolutely. We'll hear from G-Rod in a bit about his selections and what horses are going to be appreciating the soft conditions. And we've got Tom Park on the show. And Park, it's great to get your opinions on Champions Day this weekend. But I also want to, we've got the big jump off coming out on Monday. Be good to give a bit of a plug for that if you can. Yeah, quite timely, given that it's about to book it down. Jumps trainers will be... They'll be rubbing their hands together. This is proper jumps weather on Champions Day. Uh, but, yeah, the big jump-off's out on Monday. Um, it's uh, it, Yeah, make sure you grab yourselves a copy. It's packed full of insight from all our top st- tipsters, including Mr Rodway, um, who's obviously on with us. But we've got Pricewise and Mr Keeley. Um, we've got an interview with Paul Nichols, Johnny Deneen, David Jennings, all your big names. Um Look, it's a fantastic addition. Gets your blood pumping for the jump season. Um, and there were some good winners in there last year. So, yeah, fingers crossed we'll um, we'll have a few more. So, yeah, grab yourselves a copy. It's free in the Racing Post on Monday. And you can also, if you miss out on on that, you can, can buy it as a standalone. It'll be available in all, all good news agents, I think, is how you meant to, to say it these days. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be grabbing a copy on Monday. Really looking forward to that. And we also have the video show coming out Sunday evening at 6 o'clock where you can hear the thoughts of Paul Keeley, Dave Orton, Tom Siegel and Johnny Deneen. So Sunday at 6 o'clock for that. But definitely worth getting your hands on a copy of the Big Jump Off on Monday. Let's get into the action then. Um, Just quickly, we've got to try and put something together here because a gentleman in the comments last week wanted an each way lucky 31 for last week. And I couldn't get it for him last weekend, but we can try and put something together if we can this weekend. So we start off with the 115, which is the Kipco British Champions Long Distance Cup over two miles, where Kiprios has been well supported over the last few weeks. Is the 11 to 8 favourite. True Shan is 2 to 1. Coltrane 15 to 2. Sweet William is 10 to 1. Trawlerman is 20 to 1. Broom 40s and Stratum and uh, Maxton are around 100 to 1. Start with you then, Parky. Kiprios. Very well supported after obviously coming back in the Irish St. Ledger, finishing second behind Eldar Eldroff. Is this too short a price or are we going to see the real Kiprios turn up on Saturday? Um, is it too short a price? Um, I think he probably is a little bit short. Um, look, his comeback was all right. Um, he did kind of what he needed to do. We all knew, he, we knew he would come on for it. Um, would I, it's hard to say would you have liked to see him a little bit more because he is where he is. Um, they're obviously happy with him because look, he's been really well supported in the bet and he seems to be shortening all the time. Um, I just think Trushan, he's got the proven form in the book this season. Like He obviously lost his way a little bit. Um, credit to Alan King. I mean, he was talking about potentially going hurdling with him. Um, but they've obviously found his spark again because um, I thought he was gone at the game, I'll be honest. Um and he's been really good on his last two starts. He's got his ground. Um, I just think he's going to be really, really hard not to crack. And, yeah, if Kiprios returns into the, the form that he was in last year, yeah, of course he's going to be um, he's going to be tough to beat. But I just like Trushan here. I think, look, he's won the race. Has he won it three times before? So he's gone for a four-time in the race. That's incredible. Um, yeah, Trushan for me, I think. OK, Trushan, two to one. Holly Doyle aboard. Graham Robway, who do you like in this one? I think it's a good race for a bet, Sam, because uh, I don't think you can bet Kiprios at the price unless you know something 
the, the rest of us don't. I mean, he, you know, he was very, very good last season, but no doubt about it, he was well below par first time out when he returned um, in uh, at the Curra there. He was freshed by Elder Elderov. Mm. And let's not forget that he was quite strong in the market that day, and he had quite a good record fresh before that. He, you know, I think he'd won every single time he'd come to the track first time up. So... I thought on the face of it, it was very disappointing how easily he was beaten by Elder Elder of that day. Uh, yeah, obviously, if he runs to the form that he showed when he won the Irish Ledger last year or that ridiculous race where he won by a mile long shot, then he's going to win, isn't he? But how can you back him at sub two to one after so long off? And what, in my opinion, was quite a, a lacklustre first run. I mean... True Shan's the obvious source against him. He, he likes the ground. He's won it three times. He looks like he's back to form, but I don't think he had to be anywhere near his best to win his last two starts at Donny. I mean, the Grand Vizier was really close up to him where, uh, when he was uh, winning at Doncaster two starts ago, which I thought held that form down a little bit. And last time out, Emily Dickinson was the only horse who looked like she could beat him. And she just ran no sort of race and finished last at Longchamp, and he was left to beat a huge outsider, Moon Wolf. So albeit he did it easily I just don't think that he's had to be anywhere near his best and I don't think he's had a proper test in his last two starts despite looking like he's come back to form so I couldn't have him at the price either so I think Coltrane's a massive price he runs this track really well he's won he's won here twice he's finished second here twice he was second to Trushan last year in this race he looked like he had him in trouble coming to final furlong and Trushan mm. just outstayed him there wasn't that much between them we know that Coltrane's improved a lot this season he's a much better horse this season than he was last season um, and he was a short price to win that race that Trushan won at Doncaster last time on soft ground he just ran no sort of race. But I don't think they went any sort of gallop and they didn't go fast enough for him. Don't think it suited him. I think he handles soft ground and he's, he's just the wrong price. So, cold train for me, uh, Sam. Okay, cold train for G-Rod. Yeah, that could be one for the each way. Lucky 31 for the gent in the comments last week. If you are enjoying the shows, by the way, do get involved in the comments. I've been reading plenty, replying to a few. And do give the video a like. See if we can get the video to over 100 likes this week. Let's move on then to the 150 at Ascot, which is the 6 furlong Kipco British Champion Sprint Stakes. Another group one here. This is uh, over 6 furlongs. And Kinross tops the market at 7-4. The Dream, now this horse has been absolutely smashed in the market, is 13-2. to two. Millstream is 8-1. to one. Sondrine is 17-2. to two. Rohan and Spycatch are 12-1. to one. 16s and bigger. The rest in here. Graham Robby, this is Frankie's big swan song on Saturday, or from what we know it's going to be in Britain. He's got Kinross here, who was, what you'd probably say, unlucky out in Longchamp last time out. 7-4 to four favourite, but there are plenty of other mudlarks in here who will like these conditions. Yeah, there definitely are. Yeah, he's obviously mm. the one to beat again, isn't he, Bad Dream? Um, he looked really good, didn't he, when he won for the second time at York... Uh, on quick ground, but we know he loves really far, uh, really soft ground, um, and uh, he, he's right at the top of the game. And and, and I think the horse that beats Kinross will win. Um, but I couldn't back him at a short price, like you say. There's absolutely bundles of horses in this race that are big old prices that that could could uh, improve past him. Let's not forget he is six. And um, I think that the piece of form to be with is the Sprint Cup at Haydock. I thought it was a very good race, and they ran in a really good time that day. And um, there's three horses who ran in that who were all re-opposed near. Believing was third, Swing Along was fourth, and Millstream was sixth. And uh, I think that Millstream might be able to reverse the form with the other two. Um, I think the ground was probably a bit quicker than Millstream once at, at Haydock. Uh, but nevertheless, if you look at the sectional times, uh, posted two back-to-back -back really fast furlongs in the middle part of the race. And I think they just probably went a little bit too hard too soon. I think coming back to soft ground will suit Millstream. But um, it'd be the one for me, Millstream. But I, I certainly wouldn't put you off believing or swing along as well. I think they could both run well at big prices. But um, I'm hoping Millstream will reverse the places with those two here. Okay, Millstream, yeah, eight to one currently, but the Sprint Cup seems the way to go with regards to form. I got a real interest in the Dream here. I know this horse was much bigger early in the week, but once the rain come down, this horse has shortened. But this horse, right at the start of the season on Lincoln Day, actually um, won the Camage uh, at Doncaster on heavy going and really impressive style. And then the only other time running on soft ground was actually in the Palace House Stakes at Newmarket in a Group Three there, where it came up soft and. Finished ahead of Living Your Dream that day, who ended up going on to win a Nunfort. So this horse shows really good form. I've got a feeling we could see a big run. I was quite impressed by the prep run, actually, at Ascot last time out for this horse. Charlie Fellows loves having Ascot winners, and I think 13-2, I still might have a bet on this horse. Tom Park, who did you like in this? 
I like one at a really, really big price here. Uh, Makarova for Ed Walker. She improved for dropping back to five furlongs. If you look at her form, literally, she dropped back to five furlongs from six and she's she started to really improve. I'm going to take a chance that she is just going through a spell where she's really enjoying her racing. And that is more the reason for improvement. Because if you watch every time she races over five furlongs, she looks like she wants at least six. Um, she ran a really good race in the Nunthorpe, finished fourth. Um, again, in the Abbey Longchamp the other week, she finished sixth. She's a good group one form there. Um, she's 40 to one. That's a massive, massive price in a race that looks pretty wide open. She's dead consistent. And as I said, I honest, I really think that there could be some improvement here for her stepping up to six furlongs. She, she raced pretty much solely over six furlongs, but she raced as over seven as a, as a two-year-old. So yeah, I think she's going to improve. Um, and that group on form over five furlongs really puts her in the mix here. And as an each-way bet, 40 to one, and she's massive. Okay, Makarova, 40 to one for Parky there. G-Rod with Millstream, and I'm going to have a chance on the Dream in the Sprint Stakes. The final race we look at in part one of our preview here is the 225 at Ascot, which is the Kipco British Champions. Phillies and Mare stakes a group one over a mile and a half here, where Free Wind is topping the market once again for Frankie Dottori at 130. Jackie O for the Aidan O'Brien team, 4 to 1. Time Lock is 11 to above the curve, and Blue Stocking, 10 to 1. 12 to 1 about the French raid of Rue Boissonnet and Sweet Memories of 14's Bar. Tom Park, is this going to be a, another Frankie winner or have we got to be taking this on? Possibly. Um, I don't have an overly strong opinion on this race. I think Free Wind, oh look, her form's in the book in this kind of race, but she's been a bit hit and miss this season. I don't know if you could trust her. But if, her price is probably fair. I think that'll probably shorten given the Frankie factor. Um, look, I will. I, it's Champions Day. I will have a play in the race. I'll take a chance a big price each way on running Lion. Um, but she was expected the big things this year. I just can't get over how distraught Oshin Murphy was when she was pulled out of the Oaks. Um, he obviously thought that she was the real deal, and I just just got a sneaky feeling, look, she's not looked the, the horse that we thought she was in the last few starts, um, but I have got a sneaky feeling that she's much better than that. Um, not sure it's the strongest of races, and at 20 to 1 for a trainer who's won this race plenty of times, um, yeah, I'm going to take an each way chance on running line. Okay, the other John and Fady Godson horse, they're running line. 20 to 1, Oshie Murphy aboard, like Parky says. Graham Robway, I, I had to look at this and looked for anything that would love heavy ground in here. And I actually, it could be a very good day for the French. I'm not saying that with my pocket, but I'm also saying it in my head. But Royal Brassonet's really fascinating here with Gerard Mosse on board. Actually won on heavy ground at the start of the season at Song Clou and ran a mighty race on what was described as good to soft at Longchamp for the Royal Year there. And it was definitely quicker than that. Chris Cook did an excellent piece on that. But that was a good fourth behind Sea Silk Road. And coming back on heavy ground, I think the French are really going to appreciate these conditions come Saturday. So I'll take a chance each way on that. Who did you like? You know, Sam, um, I think a lot depends here on, on which track they run the race on. Um, mm. I think if it's if they run it on, on the normal track and it is heavy going, I think your French has got a massive chance. Rude Bussonet. Um, I mean, she was a massive eye-catcher in that pre-Royal Oak behind um, Sea Silk Road. Now, she wouldn't have beat the winner because she was impressive, but she would definitely have finished second with a clear run. And she came from stone last um, that day. And her previous run is absolutely red off form, isn't it? She was behind Warm Heart, um, Sea Silk Road again, and uh, Blue Rose Sam was fifth. So, I mean, that is absolutely top-notch form. And if it's really heavy and they run on, on the outside track then I think that the French horse is the one to beat. But if they run on the inside track, I like Blue Stocking. Uh, I think she wants a little bit of cutting the ground without it being really, really deep. And I think she'll get it if, if, if it's good to soft, maybe just on the soft side on the inside track. She was beaten by Al Kareem last time out, but she travelled all over him, went like looked like she was going to win, and then you know what Al Kareem's like, he don't give up, and he just battled back and, and beat her off. But uh, I mean, she's running any number of Group Ones this year, ran superbly well against Save the Last Dance on soft ground in Ireland. Mm. She's a real Group One filly, 
um, running in. I know it's a Group One, but I don't think it, there are that many Group One fillies in it personally. Um, so they're the two against the field. Blue stocking if if they run it on the inside track. But if it's really really deep and heavy ground, then I'm with you on Rue Boissonnet. Yeah, let's, yeah, we'll go with that. I think that's the pronunciation. I'll struggle just as much as you with that one, Giro, to be totally honest. Um, when do you, just out of interest, Giro, when do you think as punters should know like when they're going to switch the tracks? Because we found out today it's going to be 8am on Saturday morning. Do you think we should be told a lot earlier with regards to something like this if we are to sort of have plays on the races? Well, yeah, I mean, it's vital, isn't it, then knowing what the ground's going to mm. be like. Um, so I think we should know earlier and... I'm quite hopeful that Ascot won't leave it quite that late. I mean, surely they they will um, you know, make a decision before the end of play Friday night. Anyway, mm. um, be very disappointed if I'm still going to bed on Friday night thinking, you know, is it going to be heavy or is it going to be good to soft? It's a huge mm. difference, Sam, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. We'll just have to wait and see. We're going to be getting stuck into the final three races, but before then, do check out the Members Club offer. You can see it at the bottom bar there. 50% off your first three months using the code WELCOME2023 and this is what you could get. Welcome back to the Racing Post cast brought to you by Racing Post Members Club. Sam Hart, Graham Robway and Tom Park taking you through Saturday's action on Champions Day at Ascot. We move on now to the 305 there, which is the QE2 stakes. The Queen lives with the second stakes over a mile. Another Group 1 contest here. Paddington tops the market at 6 to 4. Tahir is 9 to 2. Who knows whether we'll see her run this weekend. Nashua's 5 to 1. Big Rock is 7 to 1. Chaldeans 11 to 1. 14 to 1 about Factor Cheval and 22 to 1. And bigger the rest. I don't really want to go too much into French form here, so I'll let you gentlemen talk first. But Graham Robway, who did you like in the QE2 this year? Yeah, I want to be against Paddington, uh, mm. Sam. I think that he's a very short price in a red-hot race after a very hard season. Um, and Aidan O'Brien tends to do this with his horses. He does, he does like to run them, which is great, obviously, for the racing fans. But um, not all of the three-year-olds hold their form uh, at, right at the back end of the season. What was that? It was Snowfall, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. A couple of years ago, ended up getting beat. You know, looked like a world beater in the middle of the summer, and then ended, ended up getting beaten at, at short odds in in the Phillies race here, I think. Um, and I, I'm quite, well, I can't say confident, but I'm I'm fairly hopeful that Paddington will get beat here and they'll make the market for a bet on something else. I've backed Big Rock already uh, at much bigger odds than he is now because uh, I think that heavy ground's really going to suit him. Uh, he, he's a he's a very strong stayer over a mile. A stiff mile at Ascot should be absolutely perfect for him. And I could see him map grinding them into submission from the front. Um, and it will be heavy ground because they're not going to change mm-hmm. the, the straight course races, are they? So... Um, He's he's the all star backed and I think a win. But uh, to hear is a ridiculous price uh, if if she's allowed to take a chance, isn't she? I mean, I priced this race up at the start of the week and made Paddington two to one and to hear a five to two. You know, and, pa- and Paddington's now what six to four and to hear is nearly five to one. You know, so purely because Dermot World says she don't like soft ground, but she pulled seven and a half lengths clear of the rest in the Guineas on soft ground. She won the Moigle last year on soft ground, so she goes through soft ground fine. And she is absolute top class horse on on all the form that we've seen. And and Weld himself said that she was a lot heavier uh, than when she had won a previous start last time after a break at the Curra. So I think she's going to improve significantly for that run. Uh, I mean, if she runs and she she's going off nine to two, five to one, I'll back her as well, Sam. But um, big rock for me. Absolutely, I agree with you there in terms of Tahira. Like this could be a fairly big price. World won't run this horse for hell of it. If this horse runs, it's going to have a chance. So. Yeah, look, 9 to 2 is a fair enough price. And you've backed Big Rock. I would not be putting anyone off Big Rock at all here. I mean, this horse looks so good at the start of the season. Look at the horses that have beaten this horse. It was beaten by Ace Impact, who's gone on to win an arc in the Prix de Jockey Club. Then was beaten by Inspira, who's won a Group 1 by 5 plus lengths after that. And you can say the last performance was a bit disappointing in the, the Moulin behind Saturn. But I would say that this horse probably didn't get the best of rides that day. Probably didn't go hard enough. What you've got to remember with Big Rock is he's going to hit the front. And he's going to make this a test for a lot of these in here. And they are going to come off the bridle one by one. It's just whether a couple of these can pass him. He will love the heavy ground. 
Chris Verhead did text me, well, I texted him midweek saying, what do you think of the ground? And all I got back was a massive thumbs up. So he's obviously quite confident with the, the rain coming. He probably wants more of it. So I don't think 7-1 to is still the worst price in the world. I know Graham, you put him up bigger prices early in the week. I've been on at bigger prices as well. But yeah, he at the half furlong pole, I think he's going to be leading. It's just whether anything can pass him on the day. Parky, you know how much I've been going on about Big Rock to you. I don't know whether you're going to fancy him now or whether you're going to be put off by me. Yeah, there's three smiling faces, I think, all here, because we're all on big rock at big prices. Um, yeah, I'm on big rock at big price as well. Um, and I pretty much agree with everything you guys have said. I think he's an absolutely stonking bet here, um, even at 7-1. to one, um, mm. I think he's just as good as the top two three-year-olds in the race. Um, he is going to absolutely love this these, these conditions. I mean, when we were discussing it last week, we had no idea whether the ground was going to be quick, slow or whatever. And I'd have still probably fancied him on quicker ground. But on this kind of ground, half this field are going to be beaten by four furlongs. Mm. Um, I'm not convinced Paddington really wants this ground. I know he won at um, Glorious Goodwood in yeah. similar conditions. That was a really funny race and he was hardly mega impressive. Albeit he's likeable the kind of way that he goes about his races, but he isn't going to be able to get away with that with... Big Rock. I mean, if they were moaning about Frankie going off with Fen Spiral at the top of the hill, wait until they get behind Big Rock. He's going to be going as hard as anything. Um, I think he's an absolute certainty to finish in the top three. Um, he does. He's shown a tendency his last few starts to just get beaten by one. But if you look at the horses that have actually beat him, I mean. it's top form. Um, I mean, he looked like he had ace impact in all sorts of trouble until... He took off like an aeroplane, but it turns out that he actually was an aeroplane. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think Big Rock is a really, really good bet here. Really good bet. And I would agree with G-Rod. Tahir is probably the one that I would fear the most and mm. is, a, is a big price as well. But Paddington's made up the market. You've got to get involved, whatever you fancy, if you're wanting to take him on. Absolutely. I mean, if people are watching, if they actually think Paddington is a really good bet, then again, he'll go back to French form. But you've got to be taking Factor Cheval as well at 14-1, to 1, who was second on soft ground at Glorious Goodwood, as you mentioned there, Parky. On soft ground, the horse bumped out the stalls, was keen all the way and didn't get the clearest of runs. Was never going to beat Paddington, but would have finished a lot closer. And the difference in prices between the two are massive. So if you like Paddington in the race and think he's a good bet, then I'd solidly recommend us an each-way bet on Factor Cheval as well in the race. So, Shall um, I tell, I'll tell you who I'm most worried about, Sam, here. Uh, Nashua. On. Yeah, we haven't mentioned her. I was going to say, she's dropped back to the mile. I mean, she could have gone for the champion stakes all this race, and we found out that she's dropped back this morning. Um, what did you make of that, Jira? Yeah, she she should have won the um, Irish Champion Stakes. She was given a, a an awful mm. ride, in my opinion, by by Holly. I mean, I love Holly, but uh, she she was well off the pace that day. And Nashua produced a, an amazing finishing effort to get so close to what two very good horses in in August Rodan and um, Luxembourg. Yeah, and and we know that she's good over a mile on soft ground and. Um, yeah, if there's going to be a horse that I don't want to see coming up behind Big Rock with half a furlong to go, it's Nashua, Sam, because I think that she's got the turn of foot to go and catch Big Rock. But, um, mm. yeah, I'm, I'm worried about that. But I'm, I'm hoping, like all of us, that Big Rock will outstay her. Yeah, it's not just the turn of foot with Nashua. It's also the fact that she stays. And if Big Rock makes it stay in contest, you know, she's going to be there at the finish. Yeah, look, it's a really good race. And actually one of the, the races that I'm looking forward to, probably the best race I'm looking forward to on the day on Saturday. So that is the QE2. But uh, a big vote for Big Rock in the QE2 on Saturday. Let's move on to what's considered the highlight there at Ascot on Saturday. It's the 3.45, the Kipco Champion Stakes, over 10 furlongs. Another Group 1 contest where the French have the favourite again here. Horizon Door is 11-4 to favourite of Miguel Barcelona aboard. King of Steel, Frankie's last ever ride in the UK. We'll see. 4-1. to Bay Bridge is 9-2. to Mostadaf, I, I can't see him turning up, but he's 7-1. to Via Sistina is 8-1. to My Prospero is 12-1. to Raw Ryan, 14-1. to Dubai on the 28th and 66-1. to And bout Aidan O'Brien's runner, Point Lonsdale. The winning connections of a couple of years ago of Seal Away, Horizon Door here um, with Miguel Barcelona. Different train this time around. Patrice Cotier trains the horse. Four from four. Won the pre-dollar last time out as easy as he liked. Speaking to Paul Keeley yesterday, um, G-Rod, I mentioned this horse and he said he's probably one of the worst price horses 
on the card. I don't know whether he did that to try and make me smile, but I completely disagree with him. What do you make of this market? I think he's really good also, Ryzen Door. I think, he, but I do think he's fast. You know, he ran, he ran um, two really fast uh, sectionals over in France. You think he threw in a, a 10.6 second furlong um, at one stage, which, you know, some of those six furlong sprinters earlier on the card would be lucky to get close to. So, the the point being with him, I know he's a French horse and he's got form on on testing ground but i think that he's quick i don't think that he's a slow french horse and and i don't think he's a stayer i think that he's a real speed horse so i'm not sure that he wants really really heavy ground big rock absolutely thrashed him on heavy ground earlier in the season at shanty and uh, of course when he won the pre dollar at uh, Longchamp, although it says good to soft there like we've said already it was fast ground that day so Again, if they move this to the inner course, I'd be more confident about Horizon Door, but I don't think he wants an absolute bog, Sam. That would be my view on the favourite. OK, so who are you going to take this horse on with? I like a few. I mean, Baybridge ran a huge race in the arc and, and loves soft ground, and, and the more of a test it becomes, he'll be, he'll, he'll be suited by it. But I, I think the bookmaker's got his his price about right. Uh, the one that I just keeps coming back to, I know he's got to improve loads, but I do think Royal Rhyme is, is a very good horse, um, and I think that he is, could well improve in this better race. Uh, last time at air when he won there, I backed pride of America and pride of America is a very, very, very tough horse to pass. I can tell you mm. that. I mean, what go back and watch his John Smith's cup win and pride of America has got about 20 horses on his towel and he just fends them all off. Well, Royal, uh, Royal Ryan was about six or seven lengths behind him turning for home at air last time, but uh, he cut him down with absolutely no bother at all and went past him like he was standing still. And Pride of America was miles clear of the rest. I just thought that looked like a top, top draw performance from uh, Royal Rhyme. He likes soft ground. And uh, his last two runs, uh, I know he's been running in much weaker races, but he ran the quickest third furlong, the quickest second furlong, and the quickest last furlong. Um, at Goodwood when he won and, and he did exactly the same at air last time so like he didn't just win and he's, he's well well on top of these horses mm. at the finish I've got no doubt he's a group one horse and he's improving rapidly he's lightly raced and I think he could go under the radar so uh, Royal Rhyme's the one for me Sam Okay, Royal Rhyme, yeah, put up by Antipos and price-wise as well. I believe it's 66 to 1, I'm pretty sure, um, Royal Rhyme for this race. So, yeah, look, a bit of confidence behind him. Tom Park, where are you in this race? Yeah, it's interesting you mentioned Royal Rhyme. I probably will have to have a save on because he was last off my shortlist. Um, absolutely <laughs> agree with what you said about his run at air. I was dead impressed that day with the way he kind of collared back a very good um, front run. As you said, that horse had all sorts of that they were all in trouble at York. So the fact that he kind of went on and passed him so easily, it was quite impressive to watch. Um, I am going to take on the favourite here. Um, King of Steel, I love King of Steel, but I've just got a sneaky feeling that this is not the kind of ground that he wants. Um, his worst performance, and you could, could argue he's nowhere, he was nowhere near the horse that he is now then, was on heavy ground, in the Verton Futurity last year, um, and I'm happy to take him on as well. The one I'm going to side with is Via Sistina. Um, I just don't think she's done anything wrong this year. Um, she ran a little bit of a poor race when sent off a short price at, um, at Newmarket, but this is much more her trip. I think she liked cutting the ground. Um, she was just... I can't get that, that performance when she beat Al Hoosen at Newmarket, which is at the very start of the season. Had me really excited, um, and she's. I know she won the. I think the Pretty Polly on her next start, so she's got that Group One form in the bag. Um, but I think this is what she's kind of been primed for—a big autumn target. Um, I like the way that she was beaten by a very good French horse last time, um, who ran a good race against Inspiral last last week. Um, but she liked the ground. Um, trips ideal. She's got a really good turn of foot. And I can just see her travelling, travelling, travelling and, yeah, kicking on. I think this looks a good race for her. I think each way you're getting, what is it, nine runners? Yeah, eight to one's a fair bet each way, I think. OK, it's one via Sestina for Parky there. I think people know by now that, look, if the French have a good day, I might end up in France on Saturday night 
um, after racing. But this Horizon Dawn, I mean, you mentioned there, G-Rod, about the, the second behind Big Rock on heavy going. But one thing I will say about this horse as a three-year-old, he's a rapidly improving three-year-old. Like, during this season, the RPRs this horse has been putting up have just been rocketing up. I think we have actually haven't seen the best of this horse as of yet. And I'm quite excited to see what we can see from him next season. I think he'll actually be even better next season than the horse to beat in in most of the middle distance divisions across Europe. But I think he's a superb bet in here. I mean, I, I looked at the, the paper this morning. First thing I read on there was Horizon Team unfazed by likely testing going at Ascot. That's enough for me. I'm going to be sticking to my guns and I'm going to be with Horizon Door in the champion stakes. And Miguel Barcelona, um, once again, he did me a favour a couple of years ago with Seeloy. Hopefully he can do it again at the weekend. Final race we look at is the Balmoral Handicap over a mile. It's a Class 2 handicap. It gets difficult here, lads, where Docklands tops the market at 6-1. to one. Sunny Liston, 7-1, to 8-1 to one about Baradar and Migration. Alma Beer is 12-1, to one. a wow, and Roscoll in 14s. And 16s bar those. Few of these interested me, actually, towards the top of the market. Sunny Liston's got to be one of the most unlucky horses in training this season deserves to win one of these big handicaps and the fascinating one is the Lincoln winner who's obviously had this race in mind for a long time the top weight migration who won the Lincoln has only run once since but gets the same conditions that he had in the Lincoln and comes here fairly fresh and eight to one might not be the worst price model for the David Manuzia team that all seem to love soft ground Parky where did you head in this one yeah I like Sonny Liston too um mm. I, I do feel like half the reason why he kind of keeps getting beat is because I keep backing him. But I'll be backing him again. Um, he's just been rock solid this year. He seems to be getting better. And he looked... It, how he didn't win at Doncaster last time, I have absolutely no idea. Like He would win that race 99 times out of 100. Mm. Um, he absolutely tanked to the front. I don't know what price he hit in running, but he looked like he was going to win going away. Um, he didn't quite get home uh, for whatever reason, um, but he's he's he, there's nothing untoward about him. Like he's he's a proper horse. This is a group horse and a handicap. I'm convinced. Yeah. Um, it's obviously a competitive race, um, but I doubt there's a horse in there with the class of Sonny Liston. Um, and yeah, Ryan moves back in the saddle. Um, maybe there to right the wrong from Doncaster. Who knows? Um, I'm sure he was just as annoyed as I was that he got beat that day. But um, yeah, I, I, I really, really like Sonny Listening. I, I know it's a competitive race, but um, I'm pretty sweet on his chances. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, and Liberty Lane, the horse that, that beat him that day at Doncaster, I think will end up being a group horse as well next season anyway. Um, they drew well clear of the rest. And Ryan Moore, I was there at Doncaster. Let me tell you, he he wants this ride he wants to try and get revenge and win a race like this so he is keen to to get this horse a win on saturday and i agree with you i think sunny liston might be the bet in here towards the top of the market but i can imagine graham robway you might have one at a fair bigger price i do yeah i do sam i like um i like david omara in this race mm. uh he's won it with lord glitters in 2017 he won it last year with shalir and both of those horses uh, were prepped up in the same race, uh, the seven furlong handicap at the track just a couple of weeks ago. And he's got one in here uh, that ran in that same race at uh, the track over seven furlongs a couple of weeks ago. Blue for you. Um, knockout eye catcher as well in that race. Like, Go back and watch it if you can on Racing Post replays. He's stone last, that horse, and he comes through strongly towards the finish. He ran the fastest second last furlong and the fastest last furlong in that race without ever ever being in contention. Uh, he's dropped back to a mark that is, I think, one, one or two pound higher than when he was last successful. Of course, he won a couple of big um, handicaps last season, didn't he, uh, over a mile. I think he, we went close at Goodwood. Uh, he's got loads of form on, on soft ground, and... Um, it's just an absolute plot job this um blue for you whether it wins or not we'll see but this 100 percent will have been the aim for for david omara and the horse is well handicapped and he ran his best race for ages uh at the track last time over a trip that that doesn't suit him so i think he'll run huge race the other one that i've got on my radar is core door i think it's called uh core door yeah for um Dermot World's running one, uh, which is quite interesting. He's got a good record at this meeting, Dermot. He don't, like you said earlier, he won't run these horses unless they've got a good chance. And um, 
yeah, Cordor won the BMW handicap at um, Galway earlier in the season. Didn't stay last time over a mile, mile and a quarter at, um, at the Curry, travelling beautifully uh, through the middle part of that race and then just flattened out. Definitely didn't say the trip. Coming back down to a mile would suit him. Problem is, he's not really got any form on really testing ground. And when he won the race at Galway, it was yielding to soft and well said he was a bit worried about the ground that day. So that is a slight concern. But as you said, Weld won't run unless he thinks that the horse will go through it. So I'm quite strong on blue for you, Sam, but I'll be back in Cordor as well. Okay, blue for you. Go on. So, sorry. The draw bias when it's this kind of ground, is it less than when it would be when it's a little bit quicker or...? It's very difficult to know uh, here, Parky, because usually when it ground comes up soft, you get that big umbrella. You know, the um, you get the big umbrella, the huge stand. Uh, yes, the umbrella. To, yeah, it seems to block out the rain. You know, on the on the near side of the track. So, I on soft ground. I don't know whether it's true or not, but a lot of people tell me that that huge stand acts like a big umbrella and blocks the rain from right on the stand side rail. So that's why high draws are often favoured when it is soft ground on the straight track at Ascot. However, I do remember in fairly recent years at this meeting, uh, a few horses winning from sort of stalls one, two, three, and four on the other side. And the reason I say it's quite difficult to know here, Parky, is because at the last meeting when they ran here, they sort of tighten the track right up um, and, and they make it a very, I think it's only 17 horses across rather than the, the huge fields that they have uh, in the summer. And they save some ground as a result. And I just don't know what part of the track they save for the fresher ground. I have a feeling that maybe they save uh, the far rail and that just clouds things. So I just think with the draw here, you could end up tying yourself up in knots and you're better off back in the one that you fancy. Mm. Well, well, it's probably going to be that wet as well. Though. It's not yeah. a difference, I don't think, is it? It's <laughs> yeah. going to be wet Well, everywhere. that umbrella's not that big, Park, is no. it? <laughs> Well, when last time you told me about the umbrella, G Rod, all of the win, all of the winners, I think the first four home in the handicap pre that day, all came from the stand side. So you, you got it spot on. So the umbrella that day did work. The uh, umbrella theory. <laughs> the umbrella theory that will live long in the memory. That one. Um, we're going to shortly be getting into our naps for the weekend, but before then, we've got another offer for you. How would you like over five hundred pound in free bets? Here's how. Do you want over five hundred pound in free bets? Well, the best free bet offers are now all in one place. Head to racingpost.com forward slash free bets where you can find all the offers from your favourite bookmakers. Click the link in the description to find out more. Welcome back to the final part of the Racing Postcast. Brought to you by Racing Post Members Club. You've still got Sam Hart, Graham Robway and Tom Park here just to deliver our naps for the weekend. So... We are going to get stuck into the Saturday's action. All of our bets are going to come from Ascot on Saturday. And do you know what? I know what I will go with, but I'm not going to go with it. I'll change it if I need to, because I feel one of you might take it. Parky, I'll start with you. Who's the best bet? Yeah, I'm glad you've gone to me first, because I think it was going to be the first one. Big Rock <laughs> is the nerf. Um I thought you might have nicked it. but uh, Yeah, Big Rock in the, the three or five uh, Ascot. Yeah, the QE2 anyway. Um, big Rock for me. Uh as we've said, love the ground. Um, this is the trip's ideal for him. He's going to have them all, all sorts of trouble. Paddington isn't going to be able to go with him. Big Rock is going to win by lengths, Sam. Yeah. Well, I I really hope so. I really do. Graham Robbo, please don't tell me Big Rock was going to be your nap. <laughs> no, no, it wasn't. I'm going to go for um, Blue for You in the last, in the four... Uh, is it the 425? Yeah, just, I just think he's laid out for this blue for you. I think it'd go really well at a good price. Okay, uh, I'll go with the other French trader, and it's part of the big double. I'll be for Rising Door then, and the Champion Stakes is my nap on Saturday. So there is our tricks. It's on the screen now. Do have a look at that. I mean, we were meant to build an each way lucky 31, but we might as well have built an each way lucky 63 um, looking at all that. So do have a flick through the selections that gently commented uh, last week. You can have a look through. And um, build a lucky 63 using those if you wanted to have a, a multiple for the weekend. I'm going to be at Ascot this weekend. Looking forward to that. It's going to be an excellent day. Hoping the weather holds out. Graham Robway, originally the plan was that you would be at Ascot. But I think you told me earlier in the week or last week that you're not going to make it. No, I won't make it, sadly, Sam. I was looking forward to going. <laughs> I had a ticket sorted and everything. But, um, 
yeah, not going to make it this weekend now. The uh, family commitments have, have, have come in the way. But I will get back to the races soon. Don't you worry. I look forward to seeing you there. Absolutely. Seeing you in the national hunt scene, I'm sure, over the next few months. That's where we're going to be heading, um, especially with the big jump off coming in, Parky. When do you actually get a rest from the big jump off? When can you finally put your feet up and enjoy yourself? Sunday afternoon, hopefully. I'm actually going down to... Um down your way to Rye on sea for the oh, for the yeah, week next week to put my feet up so that'll be nice um but yeah all hands on deck until then un- unfortunately but fingers crossed everyone will love the big jump off so absolutely um, looking forward to it look if you are look monday do pick up the paper you get a free copy of the big jump off do check out the video and let us know down in the comments on any of these videos let us know what you think of the big jump off because any positive feedback i will send parkies way um big thanks to the gents as always really enjoy these postcasts uh, tom park thank you very much and graham robway thank you very much for this weekend hopefully we'll be back plenty of winners and you can join us again next weekend where we start previewing cheltenham here on the racing postcast <laughs>